Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum. Update Thursday, August 31st, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. A plasma filament released directly Earth-facing yesterday, August 30th, and it's headed towards Earth. Arrival could be as early as September 2nd. Keep calm. It's boom time. We'll have the full analysis in just a moment on that coronal mass ejection. Now to the big story, Hurricane Idalia's aftermath. Florida rushes to restore power and clear debris. Looks like still around 130,000 people without power from the storm as it is now offshore and simmering in the Atlantic. Hurricane Idalia brings intense flooding to the Carolinas as Biden declares major disaster, disaster in Florida. Over 50,000 customers in the Carolinas still without power. Well, I do digress. Uh, it's not showing there's anyone without power in the Carolinas, just Georgia and Florida currently. But Idalia does leave damage, and tens of thousands of homes were damaged or destroyed, as well as businesses, and the water has receded, and the cleanup has begun. Now, the good news is that there are only just a handful of deaths from the storm, um, and so there is always something good. But the flooding hasn't ended. The black dots are rivers that are high, much above, more than much above, they're high. <laughs> so a lot of flooding still happening in Georgia, the Carolinas. Um, so take heed. As Idalia is offshore now, post-tropical cyclone with sustained winds at 65 Hurricane Franklin still a cat one with win, uh, winds, sustained winds at 90 miles per hour. And take a look at the activity in the, in the Atlantic. This baby looks like it has 90%, but it's going to be moving to the north. So a lot of activity in the Atlantic. As tremors are shaking Washington's volcanoes, including Mount Baker. And they're explaining that the Mount Baker quakes here are because of shifting glaciers. Now, the uptick at St. Helens is one of the largest upticks in a month in a while, almost 70 quakes in 30 days. So we're keeping a close eye on Mount St. Helens as the quakes are ever increasing here in the region. Let's get a blow up to show you how those quakes are clustering here. This is Mount Rainier. It looks like we have a cluster here away from the volcano. Could a new Cascade volcano be forming? That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? And take a look at the cluster here over at St. Helens. Quite a bit going on in the caldera. That is probably due to magma uh, then moving in and being in place there. No imminent eruption at St. Helens. But like I said, there is this cluster here. Quite interesting. Could be a new volcano forming in the Cascades. That would be quite spectacular. Seismic update, we do have some enhanced activity uh, near Kilauea that will probably erupt in good course, meaning shortly. Some activity in the mid-ocean ridge here, 4.4 in the Greenland Sea. Uh, Iceland has been quiet for weeks, which is good news. Worldwide Volcano News update, some spectacular photography coming from Abeco. We'll get to that. Semeru Volcano, Reventador, and Mayon. Semeru to 15,000 feet, Reventador to 15. Mayon. Volcanic cloud unknown. Popo today to 24,000. Ibu shooting up to 10,000. Seven Kai to 22. And we've got Popo to 24 again. Sangay to 23,000 today. Nevado de Ruiz, 20,000 feet. Karangitang, a little puff to 8,000. And take a look at Abeco volcano in the Padamushir island of the Kuriel Islands. Strong explosion with volcanic lightning. Absolutely spectacular with a daytime photograph of the boom. The explosive eruption at Abeco continues. And Sabancaya had a sporadic puff to 23,000. Now let's take a look at this plasma filament that was released yesterday that's headed directly to Earth. Here it is modeled on Iswa, and it's showing, well, a significant plasma front smashing Earth sometime on the 2nd. You barely can see the event. It's probably that little peak right there. It happened right at the change of day. The three-day geomagnetic forecast is for G5. The latest HMI intensity showing a blank sun in the next few days. When these turn the limb, there's, there'll be just some pinpricks, and we're supposed to be at solar max. 
The, the detailed three-day geomagnetic forecast is showing a six to 12-hour geomagnetic storm beginning around midnight September 2nd into September 3rd UTC. And the Earth-directed explosion was a magnetic filament on the sun which erupted in the late hours of August 30th, opening a canyon of fire in the sun's northern hemisphere. New coronagraph images from Soho show a faint halo CME en route to Earth. There is the filament release, and let's see if we can get that halo eruption. So I've pulled up the latest Soho imagery. Look, watch it twenty. Watch when it changes to at twenty four. Here you'll see the boom twenty. Boom, there it is. We're actually twenty three. So a halo eruption happening right at about midnight UTC. Boom, and you can see it shooting out in all directions. So definitely headed our way. Now, it took a while for the WSA annual solar wind prediction to update, but it's showing a major spike, the transition from the second to the third early morning. With the secondary spike on Stereo B happening hours later, this could extend that storm uh, to 12 hours. Thick plasma sheath making direct contact sometime between the second and the first overnight, which is good news for pla uh, Aurora watchers. This will be happening in the evening for most people in let's say Europe and in our neck of the woods. Now, I'm sure you've seen some of the headlines about metallic spheres found on the Pacific floor that are interstellar in origin, according to a Harvard professor. These microspherules here, according to Avi Loeb, and a team of scientists have determined these fragment, fragments from a meteor that landed in the waters off of Papua New Guinea in 2014 are indeed interstellar. And that means they're not from our solar system. The metal alloy that they picked up here does not exist in our solar system, I repeat. So some interstellar metals here coming from another solar system. More aliens, I guess. Scorching Neptune-sized world is way too massive for astronomers to explain. Well, what else is new? Our result is yet another proof that, an, that exoplanet research is constantly holding surprises. Now, astronomers have unexpectedly, unexpectedly discovered the heaviest Neptune-like planet yet. One more than four times the mass of our solar system's Neptune. This is a very dense object. Yet it remains a mystery how the world might have formed. Well, potent potentially, it could be solid metal. I don't think many people know about the liquid me metallic hydrogen model, but I do digress. Between rocky planets about the mass of Earth and gas giants, the mass of Jupiter, which holds more than 300 times our planet's mass, there are worlds the size of Neptune which hold just about 17 times Earth's mass. Previous research has found that Neptune-sized planets display a great deal of variety, and this one is no different. In the new studies, astronomers investigated TOI 1853, an orange dwarf star about 80% of the sun's mass and diameter, located 544 light years from Earth in the Booties constellation. Using NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite tests, they discovered an exoplanet around the star they dubbed Toy 1853b. The newfound planet sits 50 times closer to the star than Earth is to the sun. That's basically touching it. Completing one orbit in just 30 hours instead of 365 days, it takes Earth. The planet's extreme proximity to its host star makes it searing hot at 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. Could it be a mini-me star? Yes, it certainly could be. Well, and cosmology is, is dead, in my opinion. Now, new study coming out. Only 1,280 reproductive human ancestors once roamed Earth. This bottleneck is eclipsing the Toba eruption to literally show, saying that only 1,280 reproductive human ancestors roamed Earth. And this gene study is, well, done quite well. An ancestral human species faced a startling population bottleneck and teetered on the brink of extinction 800,000 years ago, according to new research. Now, the extinction of Neanderthals occurred during the Lachamp magnetic excursion, and guess what happened 800,000 years ago? Yeah, you guessed it. The only known magnetic reversal in recent history. The Brunus Matayama reversal called... Uh, happened 781,000 years ago, and the drop down <coughs> and the years leading up, 
The millennia leading up to the event were obviously quite taxing on the human species, which is why we're warning you about the current magnetic excursion and the potential for, well, a mass extinction event. So heed the warnings, be prepared. The empire is about to end. Hackers shut down two of the world's most advanced telescopes. It's unclear exactly what the nature of the cyber attacks were or where they were from or where they originated, but they certainly did some bad things. Some of the world's leading astronomical observatories had reported cyber attacks that have resulted in temporary shutdowns. And so things are heating up in the geopolitical world. Just south of Colorado's border, if you're vacationing uh, this summer, you can walk into an active, no, a dormant volcanic crater. Why would you walk into an active one? People do it every day, though. And here we see a dude standing, park ranger Jeff Goins, standing in the lava rocks in that volcano. It's in Capulin, New Mexico, just beyond Colorado's southern border into Mexico. A lonely highway runs through fields of cattle and pronghorns, and it literally is nearby as the crow flies, just maybe 100 miles from here, but it takes over four hours to drive there. So that's why we've never been there. But maybe one day, if you're in the region, you'll stop by, and that is a boom. I hope you also stop by to the Crestone Energy Fair coming up. Second, third week of September, I think it's the weekend of the 16th and the 17th, Lee and I will be speaking both days, we'll be vending the entire weekend, and we'll be hanging out with like-minded people, building community. Smash the like button, become a Patreon, support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. And that is a boom. Mm -hmm.